Lily went to underwriting to get her clear to close. Mm -hmm. And the underwriter was like, um, there's no money. And I said, oh my gosh, what do you mean? Like, how do we not have enough money? Hey guys, it's Joseph Limo. Welcome to an after transaction review. In this one, Janine shares with us a really wild transaction with some ups and downs that are absolutely nuts. Like always, if you have any thoughts or questions, please add them to the comment section below. And if you would like to set up a 30 minute consultation with me, all of my links are in my bio and of course this video's description. And I hope you enjoy. Thank so you. let's kind of start back to the beginning. Like, okay, let's talk about where did this client come from? Was this like a referral to you, someone that you knew already? Like, how did you start this journey with your buyer client? N not somebody I knew already. It was a referral from um, an ex coworker that I used to have back when I was in the lending uh, industry. Gotcha. Um, and we were uh, junior underwriters. Um, so I trusted that his judgment, right? So mm -hmm. I normally don't go with anybody besides my preferred lender. But um, hey, I said, hey, you know, I'm, I'm with it. I can help. And that's how I was able to meet my client. It was actually his aunt. Gotcha. Okay. So the, the lender that you were working with refer, well, a lender that you knew in the past referred you a deal. Correct. Gotcha. Well, I mean, in that case, you're not, you're really probably not in a position to have that buyer go with anyone else. So that makes perfect sense. Right. Right. Now, when you started this journey with the buyer, what was their goal? Like what was their initial intention in buying a home? Um, she was actually, she's a single mom. Okay. So her intention was, um, because of the pandemic, she said her biggest regret when we hit the pandemic was that she didn't have her own home. Mm. So her main goal was to have her family in a house. So, um, she had cleared all her debt. She had worked super hard on getting her credit score up. Um, she had money all in her 401k. So she was just putting money in there. Um, so she was ready. You know, she sounded like the perfect candidate, I would say, you know, to buy a home. Sure. Someone who worked really hard to get it, knew Crystal exactly. why they were doing all this work. For How sure. long were you out there with her uh, trying to help her find a property? Not long. Uh, we did two Saturdays, mm -hmm. full Saturdays. I, I mean, she went from like, eight to 12 properties in one shot. Like one wow. day we would go and see, we would start super early and then we would end our day roughly around the evening-ish. Um, so yeah, it only really took twice to go out there. Wow. So this is a really, really great client that you're working with. Someone yes. who, again, was crystal clear as to what their goal was, worked really hard to get there and was obviously really serious about making it happen. For sure. Yes, she was. So you guys look at a couple of properties uh, over the couple of weekends. How many offers did you end up writing? Just the one. Wow. Well, <laughs> that speaks to you, Rockstar. Nice work. So you, you, when someone's serious and they get after it, I mean, Janine knows how to make it happen. So that's awesome. So write you. an offer. Did you have other offers you were competing with on that home? Um, Two. Okay, good. So even yeah. healthy competition, but you made it yeah. work and you guys went under contract. Yes, sir. Yes. So leading up to this point, we've got an amazing story of a single mom who worked really hard because she was very clear about what she wanted. Yes. Got with you, went out there and was very serious about looking at homes, wrote one offer, got it accepted. Things are looking great. Yeah. At some point, though, where did things start to fall off the rails in this transaction? Um, well, everything was great. We were about three weeks in almost okay. done mm -hmm. and the seller passes away, not in the home, mind you, they oh. pass away, um, when they were out visiting, I believe his son and, um, he was already really sick, um, from what the agent was saying and the urgency to sell, I think was, um, it was a very motivated seller, obviously, right. because they, they knew his condition. Gotcha. We didn't, we just found out, we got the call, um, right before, um, the 4th of July, oh, we got wow. the call saying that he had passed yeah. and there was no, um, trust. Uh, there was no will. 
So mm -hmm. they had nothing in store, you know, stated for the son because he only had one son. So there was nothing in writing. Um, so at that point, they had given her the option to either cancel. Uh, mm -hmm. They were actually willing to give her her money for the home inspection that she had already paid. Mm -hmm. um, and they understood that if she wanted to go elsewhere, because now it needed to be a probate. So yeah. we know that probates can take a long time. And so um, that's basically where we left off. She still wants, she was still in it. Um, of course, with my professional opinion, not personal, but per professional opinion that I gave her of what, you know, what route she can go with this. Mm -hmm. um, and she did always have the, the option to cancel. You know, she also had the option to look elsewhere too. So it wasn't like she was stuck this entire time. She could have continued to look for something else and um, and then hopes that this probate would actually move along quick, which it did. It, mm -hmm. it actually was only a little over a month. Wow. And they got it approved. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. Okay, good. So man, that was a huge hurdle. And after yes. that, yes. you know, uh, probate gets figured out and you guys are ready to move forward and keep going. Yes. But it sounds like there were some other milestones or some other hurdles that you came across. Oh my God. Yes. Do share. That was just the beginning. Yeah. I should have told her to run from that point <laughs> on, right? We didn't well, see all this coming. <laughs> if you had a crystal ball. So, yeah. Sharon, where did things really start to fall off the rails? So, you went under contract, it sounds like sometime in June. Mm -hmm. The one of the sellers passes or the seller passes away uh, yes. right before 4th of July. And right. just to give everyone some context, we're talking roughly 4th of July takes about a month. So you're probably um, August, first week of August, probate gets handled. When did this close? We closed last Friday, October 6th. Wow. So there's there, yeah. some things happen. A huge gap. Oh, yeah. Between August and October. Okay. Mm -hmm. You share, where did things really start to get off the rails? Oh my gosh. Well, um, what I, what happened was that she, this whole time was in the dark as far as getting clear communication from the lender. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, being an agent, it's really not our expertise to, you know, give opinions on, or even really know the entire, you know, scope of what's going on with their finances, what their credit score is. I mean, you can ask if you like, but really that for our part, is you know it doesn't do us much to do our job right as agents so i was interesting that the lender knew exactly what they were doing and they were keeping her in communication and she knew mm -hmm. where she stood this whole time um we started i started noticing that there was a lot of delays going on right before our clear to close mm -hmm. um it started with the verification of employment she okay. has a second job as a caregiver so with the state um, doing the verification of employment can take a long time. And so it went from having like it done in two to five days, it prolonged to like two and a half weeks. Wow. Um, so that was our, our first hurdle that we start. well, second, um, that I started noticing that there was delays, there was miscommunication. She was unclear about her payment. And that's one thing she kept saying, mm. I don't know my payment. Do you know my payment? I said, no, <laughs> I don't know anything that has to do with your finance. You need to talk to your lender. Um, she says, I have asked, but he's given me nothing. Wow. So I'm the one that kind of started stepping in and said, Hey, um, so sorry, I got a call. Oh, yeah. Um, and I had asked for direction. I, I need, you know, to know what's going on. What's, you know, what's her payment? She doesn't know her payment. I don't need to know. I'm like, but just communicate that with her. Cause she's, right. she's a little, um, she doesn't know. It's unclear to her. So, you know, he said, I've already told her and because they're family, it was a little, you know, touchy because I didn't, I don't, you know, I didn't want to start nothing there. I just want to make sure that he was communicating to her and she was going for lender questions to him. Sure. Mind you, this is her nephew. Mm. The LO is her nephew and the lender is a whole different field, right? Yeah. So um, after that, then I started noticing that we couldn't get this VOE done and it was just prolonging. And I said, okay, can I have a date as to when 
we need an extension because all I care about is contracts, right? Yes. To make sure that we're on contract here. Um, so I kept getting, he's like, I don't know, uh, next week. And I'm like, you need to clarify right. what, how much you need. If you need longer, I'll, I'll talk to the agent and tell him. So we ended up getting three different, well, four with the last one extensions. Um, and we finally got our VOE. We finally went to underwriting to get our clear to close. Mm -hmm. And the underwriter was like, um, there's no money. The, this buyer has no money. This is how much she's showing. This is how much she owes still. And I said, oh my gosh, what do you mean? Like, how do we not have enough money? I got, um, the Ella was telling me one amount. The broker was telling me another amount. I finally got them to kind of come together because they were talking two different languages and, mm -hmm. and going in circles. So all I just said, the lending I, side. all the of them, on the, yeah, yeah, I the got broker, you. the lender, yeah. the LO, all of them were just, it's like a circus show. Um, so I finally got an amount. He had said, I just need 6,000. If you can give me six would be great. Five I can work with. And I am going to put the rest of the money down for my aunt because I mean, I think at that point he knew he messed up. Sure. Um, and I said, okay, if you're willing to do that, then we can do that. I got him 6,500 and um, I put money from my own commission. And so did the agent, the selling agent put money and then the seller did as well. Wow. By that time, the seller was already very irritated because we've already had delays and now they're, you're asking him for money. Um, you know, because she was so patient with the probate, this this seller actually did a whole septic tank for her. He took wow. care of the termite findings. I mean, he did he did the works on his end. So having to come in with more money, you know, I can understand how irritating that might have been for him. Sure. Um, so and after him being that, a, the heir to the person that passed away. So exactly. Above this and is beyond his son. all, yeah, above and beyond yeah. all that, we're dealing with a yes. very sensitive time for this person. For okay. sure, yeah. for sure. And I, he was wanting to just get rid of this house. I mean, I'm not sure if it was just one of those like, I just wanted out. You know, my my father passed away, and I don't want to have to deal with this anymore. Right. Um. So when the, after that happened, I thought we were in the clear. Sure. Um, I said, okay, fine. You know, we got the money that you needed. And even the LO had said no more negotiating. We're good. Thank you. We got it. Um, they ended up clearing us to close. Okay. The buyer ended up getting the CD with all the breakdown of the fees. Um, she signed, signed docs. her docs. Yep. <laughs> she signed her docs. Um, the docs were about to come back and deliver to, to escrow. Then we get another call from the broker, not me, he the called side. the selling agent mm -hmm. and told them, Hey, we're still short selling agent. And the selling agent sent me a message saying, wow. what's going on? I thought we were good. And so I didn't know what was going on. I had to go and fish for what was going on. Um, at that point, I was I was upset that he was overstepping at that point and wasn't talking to me or the client at sure. at least giving her the heads up first. Yep. Um, that way we could strategize as a team to see what we could do. Um, so by him doing that, he really got under their skin. So now we're delayed. Now we were short, and the seller helped. And now again, he's coming back saying, Hey, we still are short, give us more money. Yeah. Um, it almost felt like a scam at some point that we were, and I say we, cause I was included in this me, myself, the side. selling agent and the yeah. seller yep. that we were being scammed for money because um, it was only put on us. There was yeah. nothing coming in from the lender as far as the credit goes. Um, so I just thought maybe I was just part of a scam here, you know, because your mind starts going places where it's like, you don't understand why you're getting pinned and, and uh, blamed well, and pretty much saying if you in don't a situation do it, where the, the lender should have known this in June. Exactly. <laughs> right. So and and, and felt, based on our conversation, it's not that the buyer went and spent money. They no. never had enough. 
Exactly. Yeah. Never had enough. So what happened is that she had enough of her 401k. 401k, the way it works is they only give you half. A certain amount. Sure. Exactly. Anything over that, it turns into a loan and, and it could be a longer process, right? So for her to avoid all that, she asked, hey, she asked the lender, hey, is this enough? I can mm -hmm. only pull this much and then I have this much personally. Is that enough? And he said, oh, yeah, you're fine. Don't worry. I found you a program where it's 3% down. It's down payment assistance. And you, you're you good with 15000 actually. Mm. So I was like, oh, wow, okay. Um, and they had done the, the buy down on the raid and all this good stuff, right? And then all of a sudden, that didn't even exist anymore. Wow. There was no discounts from them. There was There was the program that supposedly she once qualified. She doesn't qualify for it now. Um, so all these problems started to arise. Um, at that point, the seller was, had already made up his mind that he was going to cancel. The yep. agent was just nice enough to communicate that with me. And he told me, just give yourself a night, just sleep on it tonight and tell me in the morning, mind you, the buyer was at work in a, in a work trip. Nobody had talked to her about this, not mm. the lender, not the broker, not the LO. I I was trying to negotiate this. The the LO is her nephew and kept saying, don't scare her. We can fix this. Wow. So I'm like, you need to communicate to her. I mean, at some point, his his and I relationship is no longer um, because it was it just went south really fast. Um, and I, I couldn't believe that somebody just could not communicate to their clients about the reality of what the problem really was. Sure. Um, I mean, you would think that it's family and for that reason, exactly. the communication would have been excellent anyway. And like that goodwill and wanting to do right by your family member, that's a given, right. maybe not always right. a given. Now for this sure. is though, when things really got interesting, right? Because right. the seller and the agent kind of were fed up and they decided it's time to end this thing. Right. Right. Now that puts a lot of people in a tough predicament. And when this started to happen, obviously you're in tons of pressure. You're feeling horrible because this is happening to somebody, regardless of whose fault it was, you, you right. take on that responsibility because you care. Right. This is also where things start to get very confusing, right? Because it's like all yeah. these things are happening. People are talking about, you know, I want to sue this person and and go after that person. This is where, um, you know, there was some people around to kind of offer you some support. And I know the good news is like the brokers that we work with, uh, the managing brokers are excellent. And yes. then there's also a lot of others. And I know, for example, Jason was excellent in being there for right. you. Talk right. through, you know, when it was really that dark time, when it was like not only emotional, it was exhausting, it was frustrating. <sighs> it's like, can I just walk away from this thing? Like right. in those really dark times, tell us a little bit about like who was around for you to kind of leverage and and work with and have some support around you. For sure. I mean, I I think that that I was placed in this this position with the right team mm -hmm. because and let me clarify that i i know that the lender. Jason was, i'm kidding i'm kidding not yet right the lender <laughs> 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 because it does get super dark really fast for an agent you start feeling like all of your doors are closing on you and mm -hmm. you can't breathe i mean the the feeling of desperation was on another level to, to think that I could potentially be sued because she was blaming me for mm -hmm. just as, as much as she was blaming everybody else. She put me in that category as well. And then you start thinking as an agent, man, I should have maybe done this and this and this differently, right? So I would reach out to you. I would reach out to Jay and, and Jason. And I was just like, hey, am I doing this right? Should I have done this another way you know he's like no you you really have done everything that I could think of as an agent to continue and to finish this and and honestly you are the master of contracts if oh, if you. I wouldn't have gotten that knowledge from you I would have been lost but the fact that 
this agent listing agent wasn't <laughs> wasn't closing correctly and the right. fact that you caught it and that gave us gauge to keep going and to not stop and so because of that you know unfortunately you know that agent I don't know if he was doing it on purpose or he really just didn't know what he was doing, but it really helped us tremendously on this. And to have the group of people that I did as far as the brokers, because I wanted at this point when people say lawsuit and, you know, now they're battling for thousands of dollars, it 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 honestly gets really scary. And you're just sure. like, wow, I don't even know if I'm saying the right thing. I don't even know if I should even continue talking to her. If she, mm -hmm. it, what is she is she writing everything down now? Is, you know, so, um, you know, calling the 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 broker and just saying, hey, you know, uh, I know that one broker particularly. I wish I would have remembered his name, but I was in such a, you know, in in such a bad place that it was just sometimes that people would talk and it was just like I would zone out because I was always in such fear of what's going to happen next, you know. Right. But this particular broker could relate to what I was feeling because he could tell by the nervousness in my voice of even talking about a lawsuit you know and he said you know take a deep breath I've been there myself let's not let your head go there because that could not even happen he's like just all you need to know is that you have all of us behind you on mm -hmm. this and just start keeping track of everything and then you'll you'll when that time comes then we will all be right behind you so when he said that you know he's like shake it off you're okay you know keep going and keep pushing um that really did just help me get through it you know doing my research of what you were talking about of how properly you should close a transaction mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I started reading more into it and reading into what I should do, what I should look at, what's next, what's the next step. I couldn't do it alone without everybody behind me because it was, it was so hard, you know, yeah. and for you to even call me, I remember you calling me and saying, how are you doing? Because as an agent, nobody cares, right? <laughs> Everybody's just like, man, these guys are just moochers. They just want to they just want to get their money and go like they don't care about you right that's how we're looked at like vultures but we have the stresses and the heaviness of each transaction because each transaction is very different yeah. you know and for somebody to ask how are you like doing how are you feeling how's how you going, you know, through the motions. And then it's like, man, I feel like puking every day. I'm not <laughs> eating. I'm like so stressed, you know, and I can't sleep, you know, and, and to have somebody that can relate to that feeling. First off, I don't ever wish this upon anybody. It's right. the worst feeling in the world. But just to feel hopeless as an agent, it was the worst, Joe, the worst. And you know so I, I'm so glad you bring that point up, Janine. I think a lot of people do look at agents as like, oh, their job's easy. They go show houses. And oh, yeah. I think the, I'm very excited about how the industry will continue to evolve. But I think the consumers need to, at some point, recognize it's so much more than driving to show someone a house. That's where, that's the fun. That's where it begins. Right. You know, I love when, that part. Yeah. Like when things get hard, when you're having to deal with contracts, when you are in it and you understand people's lives are impacted by things you know we're not here just taking that lightly like oh who cares where's my next commission like people Correct. like you and people like i we feel that to the core of who we are and like you right. said there was times you didn't sleep at night because you cared so much and i'm really really proud of the managing brokers that we get to work with Me too. you know this most managing brokers you don't want to make that call to your managing broker. Like here are all the problems that are going on. Cause usually <laughs> their mind is let's dissect this. Let's figure out what our potential responsibility is. What our, you know, they're, they're thinking compliance wise. And that's a good thing. Like managing right. brokers are there to protect the brokerage, but right. so many of them fail to protect the agent. And just to have that human to human experience from someone who is going to have your back at the end of the day, I think that speaks very loudly to, you know, the managing broker team that we have. And then, sure. and then thank you for, for what you said. And it's true. 
our contracts are created to have a balance of risk. And what happens is there are processes in place for both buyers and sellers to execute on that contract. And what we were finding together, and it was funny because it was in the middle of a phone call. I'm like, wait, time out. Did this <laughs> thing happen? And you're like, well, no, what's that? And I go, oh man, we have an opportunity <laughs> here. So essentially, you know, sellers don't have a right to just get mad and say, I'm canceling you. Right. Based right. on the contract, based on what contingencies may or may not be in place, there is a process to do so. And yes. so many agents don't know what that proper process is. So what we found is someone was trying to hard press you to mm -hmm. just be canceled, right? Did they ever send you anything prior to trying to cancel you? No. See, and that's one problem. And then another problem, Janine, that I hear from another agent recent, literally the same week, someone was trying to send them a notice to perform, even though all contingencies were removed, which in California, in our situation is not the right documents, not at, at that right. part of the process. Right. So this is where, you know, you really jumped right back in. And this is where I want to give a ton of kudos to you jump right back into that i'm i'm going to find my way through this and you know what that cannot be taught people can give you all the right answers but if you just quit on yourself or quit on your client that's it yeah. but you didn't yeah, you you triple down and and kind of the last dialogue you and i had is like there is space and there is time because they don't know how to actually enforce a unilateral cancellation so in right. that time and space, we're not going to tell them how to do their job because right. you obviously are just focused on your buyer. But that that moment alone created everything you needed to find the path forward. So yes. tell us a little bit about that. Because again, this is a happy story. Even though it was rough, well, yeah. this one ends good. There is a happy ending yeah. eventually. <laughs> um, yeah, so after, after doing all that research, I... I had to figure out if our docs were good. If our docs were good and not expired, we can continue to push. Uh, found out docs are good from escrow. After that, we got on a three-way call, myself, the lender, and the buyer. At this point, everything is on paper now. Everything is on a three-way call and everything is being clearly communicated to myself Fine. and to the buyer. Beautiful. So we, I felt like almost like a, tag team almost on the lender um well we you were quarterback you you yeah. kind of took on that responsibility of like i'm gonna man i'm managing this bad boy yes yeah. i honestly was the lo the 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 lender the broker <laughs> but i had to right i had to take all these little roles and and put all these hats on because i was like we're not we're, we're not dropping this ball no more mm -hmm. this is our last chance and before this agent figures it out, how to do it correctly, right? We have to beat them to the punch. Right. So because I, if they would have figured it out and canceled, yeah. your buyer had already removed contingencies. So just Correct. so it's clear, her earnest yes. money deposit was at risk. At risk. Yep. Right. This The money was at risk before we cleared to close. Yep. So the money was already at risk because I had gotten the okay from the lender in writing that we were good. She qualified, no problem. We just needed this VOE and we're done. Perfect. My part was done with the, with the inspections and the appraisal. Mm -hmm. I felt confident and comfortable because that's not where the, the, the problem stemmed from. It was from the lending side. Mm -hmm. So after all that was done, her deposit was not being released. So mind you, the seller canceled and now the seller was fighting her for her deposit, saying, no, I will take her to court. I'm not giving it back. I've already spent so much money. I mean, this this was a sell that wasn't even his. It was his dad. It was all yeah. inheritance money at this point. So after getting everybody back, I pretty much got everybody back on the negotiating table mm -hmm. here. We ended up negotiating the lender to give a credit. I told the buyer at this point, I'll give you a lot more of a credit from my commission, but I told her I can't do this without their help. And if they're not willing to help, then 
this is done. Well, let's just not have this conversation and we'll continue to try to get your deposit back. Right. And so she says, no, I'm going to call them. Let's call, let's do a three way. And I said, Oh, perfect. Let's do it. We called, um, you know, he was again, going in circles, not making sense. I finally told him I used to be in the lending industry. I know how this works. I know that the lenders can give credits. I get that you felt like it wasn't your fault because the LO dropped the ball initially, right? Oh, and then the LO got fired after this yeah. conversation um, because now he cost them money. Mm -hmm. So I know how this business works. I know there could be discounts. I know there could be credits with situations like this. When the lenders do drop the ball, yeah, it wasn't initially your fault, right? But it was somebody that was in the lending group that mess that missed this so what are you guys gonna do about it and so i mean he was upset he kicked he kicked and screamed at the end of the conversation he said okay thirty five hundred dollars we'll give for credit perfect i gave my end i gave my credit and then we got the actual figures because they still couldn't give us the actual closing cost total we got them from escrow and i said okay give us a number how much you need and so I gathered between myself, between the lender, and I told the buyer, this is what you need. We made sure we got the credit in writing from the lender and they confirmed to the escrow company. Um, I called the agent and I said, hey, I got some good news, however you want to take it, but I was able to renegotiate this again okay we got the money the 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 buyer has all her money she's got some credits we can close this in two days and he was like uh, uh, uh. he just didn't know what to say he was right. had no words i'm like are we are you in or you're out i i'm not we're not asking you for money we're just asking you to give us to the end of this week he said yeah he's i'm like so can you call to confirm with your 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 seller so he called me back he said he's he's good. Can you make sure it funds up by Friday? I said, I want to do it by tomorrow, but yes, our goal is Friday. So. And let's talk that, about the strategy I mean, there. Let's talk about the strategy there. Cause this is sure, where things sure. get really fun. This sure. is where uh, a, a, a broker that I worked with for a long time named Jerry Stapp taught me, you have to live between the four corners of the contract. So this is where strategy came into play. As soon as you were clear, that the seller didn't have a right to cancel you. I know they sent you a cancellation, but yes. they were not in a position to actually cancel you. So oh, that cancellation right. was null and void. And you right. were smart enough not to let them know that. You're just like, whatever, because I you knew we're still we're still in this thing. Yes. When yes. you went to that agent and said, Hey, we're in a position to close this thing, strategically, that was so important because, and we talked about this beforehand, either A, your client's going to be able to get their home, which was the goal, right? But the secondary goal, which was not plan A on any level, but was a solid plan B, mm -hmm, is that mm -hmm. she would be able to get out of this thing and keep her money, her earnest money deposit, right? Right, right. So right. when you approached that agent and said, hey, we're back in a position to close this thing, if the seller and the agent would have pushed not to do it, then they would have mm -hmm. initiated a cancellation and if right. they would have niche, then that would have positioned your buyer to be in a much better place, obviously, right. to receive right. their money. Even if it went, you know, in front of an arbitrator or something, if they had the means to close and the seller didn't want to, I mean, that's an opportunity for the buyer to say, I'm going to pull the plug, but you're giving me my money back because exactly. I could have closed. Right. So right. strategically, you navigated this thing like absolutely perfectly. So at the end of it all, you closed. We closed. Yes. Yay. Finally, yeah. last Friday, we ended up closing. I found the lender number. I called them first thing Friday morning and I said, hey, we have to fund this. I talked to the funding manager um, and I told her what the scenario was. I didn't tell her the entire story. I just said, hey, we need to close this. Docs are expiring. Yep. The buyer is in risk to losing her deposit if we do not close today. Uh, we sent everything that you asked for the night before um, within 45 minutes, Joe, they already cleared the condition and they funded the loan. Wonderful. So. And that's, and again, that really comes back to you navigating this thing extremely well. 
Thank you. Staying in there, even though that there was a lot of times where it was dark and ugly and you were being blamed for things that you had zero control over. In fact, you were the only one sticking around and just taking it on the chin of responsibility, despite the fact that there was nothing that was in your role where right. the issue was coming from. So I really applaud you for that. And thank you. Let me ask you this like, how did it go when the buyer received her keys? Wow. She had tears. She had thank yous. She had so much gratitude. And she honestly, um, and above her, her own family that was helping her initially, you know, she had said that, you know, she thanked me for sticking this out and continuing the fight because at some point she felt alone and mm -hmm. abandoned because she said that, you know, now that it was canceled, that she felt everybody just kind of, you know, just kind of went their own way and, and didn't want to navigate with her anymore or help her at this point. And so she thanked me for sticking it out, for continuing to fight for her. Mm -hmm. And I mean, night and day attitude, right? Because I remember calling you like, she's screaming at me. Like, yeah. I can't even explain myself. But at the end of the day, you know, we had a, a good powwow. Um, I had a, a sentimental place in my heart for her because I was I I was raised by a single mom. And so I I can I can understand the struggles, you know, sure. that she went through and or is going through. And so I couldn't give up. I just couldn't. There was just something inside of me that kept was an unsettling feeling, you know, and at the end of the day, you know, as agents, you know, every client is is unique and different and every mm -hmm. transaction is different as well you know and and you to be a good personable agent you have to get in in that personable space with your client and and really think with your heart sometimes and let that guide your way you know and so honestly i couldn't put this to sleep until i was done and so and we you did it. And, and, you're, and you're right, Janine. I mean, it's it's really understanding your client's goals, where they come from, and how it will absolutely right. impact their life. That even in the darkest moment, when all hope is lost, there's still that something in you that's going to cause you to move forward. And for any consumer who sees this, like, please know, that's not everyone, but that definitely is Janine. Um, <laughs> let me ask you this. This, this has been a roller coaster for you. Oh my gosh, to say the least. How does this transaction empower you for your future, for future transactions? Like how has this been a really good benefit for you as you move forward in your real estate career? Um, well, I'm taking your advice and I am getting back out there. I I remember telling you I'm done. Like I just want to walk away. I'm done. I don't I I I'm okay with just being a stay-at-home mom and that's it. <laughs> But honestly, after all this was said and done, there was a feeling almost of empowerment mm -hmm. inside knowing that, you know what, in spite of the fact that I am just a stay-at-home mom, right? Sometimes my conversations are with a four and two-year-old constantly, you know, um, talk about Blippi all the time. And to be able to really negotiate a hard deal with some of the I want to say the baddest agents out there, you know, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. some would have just been like, nah, it's not even worth my time. Right. I'm losing money because at the end of the day, I did lose a lot of money. You know, I didn't make what I should have, sure. but I was okay with that, you know? So it did give me that boost of confidence. I think I might've been lacking prior to this, you know, it gave me the sense of, of how to really put my clients first to fight and not stop until I can't go no more. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, so at this point, you know, I, I, I definitely want to keep pushing. I, I definitely don't want to give up. Yeah. Um, I, I feel like now that I went through all this stuff that it did put me in a much better position as an agent, you know, to look at the contracts, to see exactly how to navigate my client accordingly. Right to do more research, to be able to do more trainings, to strengthen my knowledge as an agent, because at the end of the day, that will take you so far. You know, it's not just about negotiating contracts. It's about knowing your contracts. And, and if you don't it. know, 
exactly yeah. then you're going to be lost you know luckily i had my team with me that really did just help me through this this insane hard time and so because of that i feel that it it it's just going to push me harder you know what i mean it's going to it's going to make me better and i'm going to keep learning as i go i this isn't the end you know i have tons of more transactions to do and learn from and Janine, just know this. I think the community um, consumers out there, they need you. They need people who okay. genuinely care. And that is not an easy thing to come across. And then I know that you know this. And, and you know, A, you've got people who've got your back. That's the good news. Yeah. You got the consumers back. We got your your back. And, and together sure. we make a, all make a great team. But the other thing is, I'm very proud of you. Like as someone mm-hmm. who has seen all that you went through just person to person. Right. Um, I've seen when it was, you know, you told me you weren't eating and, and you were having a hard time sleeping to when, when you thought you didn't have any more to give and then you hit that floor and go, Oh no, there's so much (laughs) more of me. Like, man, I want you to take that with you and go conquer the world because Janine, you can, I've, I see, I see you, you can do it. And uh, man, I feel honored just to be a part of that journey with you. Thank so. you. Thank you. Congratulations. And this was a tough thank one. Thank you. It was a tough one, you know, and just just for agents that, that are coming in and not not really knowing and understanding the role, because that's not what's taught to us, right? But in, in class and in, in getting this test done, it's until you get into the nitty gritty of this business that you're really going to realize if you're meant to be here, you know, mm-hmm. you have to have thick skin and just remember, like, I, I remember saying this out loud on Friday. It's not over until I say so. Amen. And I said so. And it was over on Friday. <laughs> I love it. 